One day after signing a restrictive abortion bill, North Carolina's Governor Pat McCrory attempted to make peace with pro-choice protesters outside his mansion with cookies. The governor crossed the street carrying a plate of cookies and reportedly told a woman, quote, these are for you, God bless you. Protesters placed the plate of cookies back at the mansion gates with a note reading, Governor McCrory will take women's health over cookies. Protesters say Governor McCrory is breaking a promise he clearly made on the campaign trail last year. This past year, state lawmakers passed the Women's Right to Know Act, a new law that added restrictions and some say made it more difficult for women to get abortions in North Carolina. If you're elected governor, what further restrictions on abortion would you agree to sign? I'll start with you, Mr. McCrory. None. All right. <laughs> Joining me now are Elise Hogue, president of NARAL Pro-Choice America and Anna Marie Cox, columnist for The Guardian. Elise Hogue, I've been wondering, why would the governor in that debate give such a clear answer if this is what he was going to end up doing? What was he thinking back then? You know, I think he was thinking what we all know, which is that women's health and women's rights are actually the, the mainstream in America, and he couldn't get elected if he said what he was actually going to do, which is end up taking choices away and restricting women's rights. And this goes to what we're seeing, which is people don't trust politicians. They don't trust them in North Carolina now more than ever, and McCrory has given them every reason to. But people do trust women. People do trust doctors to make their own choices about these critical health decisions. And uh, there was a resignation now by the state health director uh, who said uh, that in her uh, announcement of her resignation said, I acknowledge that I have significant differences and disagreements with many of the policy administrative directions that I see unfolding in North Carolina and in the Department of Health and Human Services. These differences are making it increasingly impossible to continue to be effective in my current role. Uh, now, Anna Marie Cox, she did not specifically say anything thing about this new law but you know there she was in an administration where she probably believed what the governor said during that debate and probably was made to feel very unwelcome. I just want to sort of jump in and say what I, I think McCrory might have been thinking, which is that he, these laws get passed in part because people believe uh, politicians when they say that they're to for a woman's health, you know, that these are somehow making abortions safer. Um, and so politicians, they think, are plausibly arguing that these aren't abortion restrictions so much as, you know, things that they do be out of concern for women's health. And, and I think Elise knows probably even better than I do um, that, in fact, these laws actually make abortion uh, more unsafe for women. They cause abortions to be done later in term when they're more unsafe to do. Um, and they, and they, there's no like epidemic of unsafe abortions happening, really. Um, the, these laws solve a problem that doesn't exist. And, and I hope that, that, that McCoy gets called out on this, that, 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 you know, abortions are going down in this country, and that's a good thing. It's because of the, and it's because of the availability of contraception. It's because of the availability of abortions um, in early term and the possibility for women to be able to talk to doctors on their own that we're seeing this. And these laws actually sort of get in the way of that trend. Uh, now, Anna Marie makes a good point, Elise, which is that this is is for women's health. We are saying that they must upgrade significantly the, the facilities that they're doing these procedures in and make them basically world-class surgical centers. So why isn't that a good thing for women? Because it is, as Anna Marie said, solving a problem that doesn't exist. This is a specific regulation targeted at a clinic with a specific goal, which is to drive them out of businesses. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would see a law that equally applied to all of these facilities that perform similar uh, types of procedures, like dental facilities, like colonoscopies. No, this is very specific. It is directed at abortion providers, and it's intended to drive them out of business. And like Anna Marie said, not only only um, do, do is that not good for women's health but I actually think that McCrory and these other politicians know that what they're doing is not popular and if it was exposed to public debate it would actually come out that they are in fact endangering women and that's why they do these things in secret that's why they have to cheat and lie and go back on campaign promises to achieve their goal which is to force these clinics to shut and endanger women. Anna Marie what do, what do you foresee uh, 
uh, say two years, when, when a law like this is about a couple of years old, what kind of uh, cases and what kind of incidents do, can, can we, will we see that we haven't been seeing in this country? Well, ironically, as we've been saying, it can actually make abortion more unsafe. It can drive up the cost of abortions in terms of women you know, having to travel to get them. It can also create a kind of back alley abortion provider that you know, we <laughs> that was one of the reasons why people embraced the passage of Roe v. Wade is to get rid of that kind of thing. You encourage women, especially poor women who don't have the means to travel great distances to go to a place that's that's legal in North Carolina, um, to go to a place that says that they can perform an abortion and maybe doesn't have have the right kind of equipment, doesn't have the standards that a clinic would have, it was operating in the open. Um, these are things that can happen. Um, there's a great article I have to point to on Boing Boing, um, the website that's an interview with an OBGYN who practiced in Kansas, which has some of the most restrictive abortion laws in the country, and she talks about the patients that she would see in the emergency room coming in with botched abortions that were done, they were undocumented immigrants that were getting abortions, and women that were just too scared for whatever reason to, to try and go through the rigmarole that was required in Kansas. Um, and that's what can happen here. Um, these laws can have the exact opposite effect of what the politicians are saying. And I hope it's th through discussions like these that we expose this to the light of day because they are doing this in secret. Elise Hogue and Anna Marie Cox, thank you both for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thank you.